Hello everyone. Well, I've just made a video for my other channel. I've got my lights up. I've got my video camera out. So I thought I'd have a chat with you lot, if that's okay. Yes, it's going to be another video. I'm just chatting. Sorry about that. I haven't got round to sort of <laughs> getting all those videos edited. Oh, crikey. This channel would probably take off um, if I could just get you regular videos two or two a week perhaps i've got so much stuff i've pre-recorded it's not like i have to video new footage so um anyway it's a beautiful beautiful day very very cold it's it's in the minus uh the temperature this is the winters i enjoy living in the uk most of our winters are wet and misty damp and depressing so despite all this global warming we've got freezing temperatures during the day and even colder temperatures at night so um, it's fantastic there's snow on the ground just the dusting we've had quite a bit of snow it comes and goes um, we've got a dusting of snow so that makes the intense sunlight even brighter because of course the white reflects everything I've moved, I've, I've got two um, solar powered um, security lights, one over my garage door and one over my back door. But in the winter, they don't really get a proper charge. So at the moment, I've got some lovely sunlight on the back of the house. So I've moved the one from the garage, just it just unhooks, and I've put it next to the one over the back door. So they're getting a proper charge up today. So it's it's lovely. I think I should venture out. Uh, and uh, just breathe in the lovely fresh crisp air it's it's fantastic so um, moving on from my last video my bedroom is still a bit in chaos in fact <laughs> this room is a bit chaotic well it's more chaotic than normal because I've moved stuff I've currently got I think about six vacuum cleaners for sale so they're sort of waiting in limbo to be you know sold and uh, collected and then I expect very soon after they've gone there'll be another eBay listing promotion so I've got some more earmarked but oh I had a little bit of an episode <laughs> a couple of days ago um, and I always feel that I'm being thwarted I'm trying to do my best I'm trying to get things done but every step of the way there's something happening Oh, Daisy's having a bit of a scratch. Here she is. This is what you want to see, this beautiful dog. Um, yeah, there's always something that stops me. So I got out a few vacuums and for one reason or another, I can't list them on eBay. Now I've got a cordless machine out. I can't list that because I've, I don't know where I've put the uh, charger for it. It's somewhere in the house. Uh, I've got another upright cleaner that should have had loads of bags with it, but obviously I took the bags out of the box and stored them. They're probably at the back of the garage. And if you could see in my garage, you'd know why I'm not getting those at the moment. Um, there was another cordless vacuum I wanted to sell, but it's missing the dusting brush. I don't know why it's not got it in the box. I just, you know. Anyway, so I got frustrated by that and sort of started looking for these things and gave up and thought they're going to be in the garage. But there's another place in my house which I have a loft. I live in a, a two, they call it a two and a half story house. So it's got obviously the ground floor, first floor, and it's got a second floor, which is considered a half floor because it's in the loft space. And that's my bedroom where I was in the last video. But behind those built in wardrobes, there is a void space with a little, well, it used to be a little, it used to be a little plastic hatch that you had to remove using a coin. There was two notches at the bottom and you took the cover off and you could access the plumbing for the ensuite and stuff. So the first week we moved in, I boarded all that up because it's a good useful space. So I got loft boards, bit of old carpet and that's all boarded up and full, full, to, right to the door, full of vacuum cleaners. So I thought, oh, well, perhaps some of the bits I'm looking for, I might find them in there, you know, I might just put them in there. So I ended up basically just taking out most, not everything, but I took out a lot. But it was it was good because I found vacuum cleaners in there that I, I decided to sell. 
and I managed to put some vacuum cleaners that I don't want to sell at the moment in there. So it took a while, but you know, it achieved, I did achieve something at the end, but during it, now I'm not showing you, but I've got a little, it's tiny, I've got a little lump on my elbow, which I did have operated on. Okay, it was removed. I kept, every time I knocked it, it's agony and it makes me swear like a trooper. I mean, uh, and scream and bang about and have a, 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 a real sort of toddler tantrum if I knock it. And for some reason, I never knock this elbow. This is fine. I never knock this. It's always I'm just, just a slight knock against, the, you know, the, the edge of the door uh, or anything that happens to be in the way. And it's like... <laughs> I did that three times during the course of a thing and I just and I was feeling pretty pretty low and I just basically had a hissy fit. I expected that if it was being filmed people would find that funny, but it wasn't funny at the time. I was absolutely I was so at my lowest ebb. Because again, you know, I'm I'm saying to whoever's being I'm saying, look, I'm trying. Why are you doing this to me? I'm looking into the space, ether. Why are you doing this to me? I'm doing what I'm, I'm trying to get sorted. I'm trying to get this house sorted. I'm selling stuff. You know, I'm I'm doing it. Why at every step am I being stopped? Uh, and I, you know, Mark, because I, I banged about and because I was so frustrated, Mark comes up the stairs. Mm, what's wrong? So I told him <laughs> to F off, basically. I was very, very rude to him. Um, but I just... I just was so, so frustrated and angry at everything. So after the anger came the despair and I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. More, you know, I've cried a fair bit this last few months, last year nearly, who hasn't? Um, but this was a proper, proper uh, woe is me sob, you know, it was I have several different types of cry. You know, I have the nostalgic cry where, you know, I see something on the TV and think, oh, why can't the world be like that? And other, you know, I cry when I think of dead dogs and things. But this, this particular episode was an absolute despair, absolute end of my tether. I'm, I'm tearing up thinking about how I felt then And after I calmed down, well, I, while I was in the loft space, I was on, uh, I had um, Amazon Prime Video on and I was listening to the Sex and the City movie. And even that upset me because it shows people in nightclubs and people hugging, and people having a good time, just doing what the human race it's meant to do, it's meant to socialise, it's meant to meet people for a drink, it's meant to go to restaurants, it's meant to go to clubs and dance to music. We're meant to have this contact and just watching bits of that, you know, as I was doing, I was glancing at the screen. And there was just this bit where it's New Year's Eve and uh, Carrie is on her own and Miranda's on her own and Carrie sort of decides to to go through New York and uh, wherever she lives in New York and uh, pay Miranda a visit so she wasn't on her own. And she was passing people just in the street, having fun and just being human. And that upset me. Because that's not happening now. And the way things are going, you think, is that ever going to happen again? Are we? But I don't think even for someone like me, and I've explained before, I'm pretty much a hermit and pretty much not bothered about human interaction as much as most people. But even someone like me who, who can often refuse his invitations to go places because I don't want, it's over, to me, it's overstimulation for my brain. You know, I like, I like to be in small groups of people I know well, rather than a large group of people I don't really know very well and just dealing with all that is quite difficult for, for me and I'm sure for other people some of you watching will probably know what I'm talking about to some people going out doing that it's it 
energizes them and it gives them you know makes them full of life but for someone like me that sort of situation depletes me and it makes me exhausted and I just can't wait to get home and curl up and be alone you know so for someone like me for it to be affecting me it must be really bad for all of you who really like to go out that's all I'm saying and I've said I think this is a lesson if if things return to what we hope is normal I don't want new normal I want normal I want normal interaction I don't want to have papers on me I don't want to be showing papers to to officials giving me permission to to do my shopping or to to travel outside my area I just want to be able to go whenever I want to go I want to just you know most of the time I won't do it but I want to have that option so I think this is a lesson for me and maybe a lesson for a lot of people if if we get back to normal I'm going to do more things I've said to Mark look if we can get to a restaurant if they're still open I'll take you out and I'll treat you to you'll have to be a vegan and ve or vegetarian Mark's more or less vegetarian slash vegan now anyway he stopped having milk and dairy now so there is a lovely little cafe in um, Ilkley which is a lovely town in uh, Yorkshire we go there with our friends hopefully that will have survived who knows when we're allowed uh, when all right be positive when we're allowed back out who knows what shops businesses restaurants have survived this and it's up to us to support those I've stopped I still buy on Amazon but it's just laziness buying on Amazon and when I can find them from other places so I am I'm not buying on Amazon as much and going forward I'm going to try and support more local businesses the businesses that have survived and please do that yourself if you've got local businesses even if it's a bit more inconvenient please go and support them even if it's even if it's an online more local thing online if they haven't got an online if they haven't got a you know physical store anymore but if you know that they're a local business or even a, a business from your country even you know you know what's a big business you know so avoid the Amazons, you know, the big businesses. Try and go for the smaller. They may cost a little bit more, if, but who's got the money? You know, you might not. <laughs> who knows who's going to have a job to spend a little bit more in these uh, local businesses? But anyway, that's what I'm going to try and do. And I've, I've, if the girls at work, I mean, I don't work there anymore, but if they decide to have a get together, they normally go to this curry house, which will serve some vegan stuff. I will say yes I'll be glad to go and I'm, I, I expect the first time I do that I'll be sort of in tears because it, it'll be like oh it'll be I'm just picturing and this is what I'm trying to manifest I'm just picturing people just being able to go about the business without masks on without having the temperature checked without queuing outside to be let in all that I think it's going to be a weight lifted off people's shoulders people are just going to be there are going to be some people that are going to go completely wild and get drunk and probably fight in the street you know but this this period has certainly given us time to think I think a lot even before this happened so um I don't know it's just absolutely bizarre it's coming up for a year since this this started and it's it's just absolutely bizarre but I do think I'm seeing signs that people are starting to think hey this is bollocks especially in the UK when they're, they're, they're saying that they're claiming that most of the um, vulnerable people have had their their vaccinations and as much as I asked my mother or pleaded with her not to she's had it and uh, as far as I know she's okay at the moment but there have been reports of people 
dying and getting other illnesses after they've had the jab, so I don't know. But anyway, so if the most vulnerable in the UK, certainly, I'm only speaking of the UK, if the most vulnerable people have been vaccinated, then why are we still locked down? And now people are starting to think, why is that? Why, you know, even people that just believed in the whole narrative, they're, they're starting to think, oh, well, hang on. And they're saying now, oh, don't book any holidays. Don't book your holidays for summer. I mean, we've got something booked in March. Nah, that's gone. That's a caravan holiday. And I think there's something in June and July that's on the cards. But it's possible we'll get a holiday in September. But people are going to start getting angry. People need a holiday. People need to get out. I don't care about going abroad. My passport's expired anyway. And if things are going the way that they're saying they're going, you'll have to have an immunity passport to say you've had the vaccination. So if you haven't had the vaccination, you, you've no chance of going anywhere. So as long as I can still go out with my, my lovely little caravan at some point and go and visit my mum, I don't care about going abroad anymore. But if they stop that, if they restrict you to five miles within your house, people are going to start rebelling. But I've said this before, I think the only thing that's going to make the British people start really rebelli rebelling and rioting in the streets is the government come and say, well, we've found that dogs and cats can transmit the virus. You've got to go and take your dogs and cats to the vet to have them put to sleep. That's the only thing even my mother would be out there with the placards. Save our dogs. Save our pussies. You know, because <laughs> we're, 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 it's claimed that the, you know, the UK is a nation of animal lovers. Well, I did watch Katie Price. Um, I don't watch her anymore. She was, she was apologising for all the furs she had, all the fur coats, because she said she didn't see any harm in it because she ate meat and she wore leather. So she didn't see any harm in the fur. And then apparently she saw something. She's only saying this because she, she can plug this synthetic faux fur that she's flogging, you know. She's saying, oh, it's bad now. Oh, I love animals, she says. Well, don't say you love animals if you still eat them, you know. This is what I say, people, people around here, they get so upset. We've got some sort of horses in the fields, you know, just on the road coming into the village that are neglected a bit, you know, they, they are owned, but I think they end up in for dog meat or something. They're not really properly looked after. They're more or less left. And the owner occasionally comes and gives them straw, but you know, and all around the village, they, they're up in arms and getting collections up to build them a shelter and all this palaver. But I bet the majority of the people that are all upset about the horses eat meat. So it's a double standard. You know, you'll love your dogs and cats and your pets and you wouldn't dream of eating them, but you'd be quite happy to eat a cow or a pig. You know, I'm not saying what you should eat. I, you know, you know, if you know, watching for a while, I'm a vegan, was a vegetarian, have been vegetarian for really all my adult life, more or less, odd lapses where I've had fish. But on the whole, you know, I can't see myself ever going back to eating any animal product. But that's my choice and it's your choice. But although they're saying they don't want us to eat meat, aren't they? You know, because of global warming. Well, I don't see any evidence of global warming outside at the moment. Um, gosh, you see, this is the trouble. I don't have any things to say and I just ramble on. Oh, yes, that was the point. I wanted to get, um, yes, I've, I've completely gone off topic. <laughs> Anyway, I was uh, watching Sex in the City. I got upset over that, seeing people interacting as they should do. And then uh, the last time I banged my elbow, I just, just, just collapsed and sobbed, 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 blah, blah, blah. So I just clicked onto YouTube and I have been watching. Now, as you know, when you start watching YouTube, if you watch a certain video, you get recommended similar videos, don't you? So you watch one video on a particular topic, you'll start seeing them being suggested. So I have started watching a few sort of religious um, type videos, you know. 
um, I can't remember. Um, anyway, there's a. Ch it, uh, I've just been watching about sort of faith and it is more of a Christianity thing. Um, as I've said before, I don't really believe in a religion as such, but I believe in a, in a spirituality and, and a creator. And so I am what I started looking at sort of videos like this that do talk about the Bible and things. And I just randomly, as a, in my depth of despair, when I was like, woe is me, why am I being punished sort of thing, you know, really sorry for myself. I went on YouTube, just picked something that I was drawn to, just clicked on it on my iPad and watched it. And it really spoke to me and it calmed me down. And it was like, I was, I was supposed to watch it, you know, it was that odd, odd sort of coincidence. I was supposed to watch that and I watched it and that I, I cried watching it and it but it comforted me so I think well thank you whoever directed me because I do believe and I've said it before that we are directed in certain directions especially if we're in in despair and some of my some of the best things that happened to me have been sort of I feel that I've been guided towards finding out about things. Things pop into my head. Now, so what I'm saying is I, it came at the right time. And, and I think this video is basically saying that when you're, it's not God. I'm going to speak of God because I believe in a God. You know, you may not. When you're getting all these things going wrong, all these obstacles put in your way when you're trying to do something good and productive it's not God that's doing that to you it's the devil or it's it's not you know it's the devil or some evil entity or it's not God that does that to you so instead of saying you know and that reminded me because I did read about that before it's not it's coming from the dark side this the negativity in your life it's not coming from a good place anyone can see that whether you believe in in the god or the devil negativity doesn't feel good does it you know instinctively if you're a good person you know what's good and what's wrong and even if you do something that's wrong unless you're a complete psychopath you do have pangs of conscience and you think mm, I shouldn't have done that so that's just some will say it's just your conscience isn't it or some might say it's your guardian angel you know it's you've got an evil angel and a good angel on each shoulder you know and sometimes the evil takes over so whether you believe in uh, in good and evil uh, well good and evil does certainly exist but I'm talking if you believe in God or the devil or not it doesn't matter it's still the same for everyone you don't have to believe in, in God and the devil. You can't deny the existence of good and evil. So that's what I, it did remind me, you know, it is the devil and you just say, you can just say out loud, oh, F off devil. I'm not listening to you. I know it's, I know what you're trying to do to me. Just go away. I'm not going to take any notice of you. And you just got to plough through it and you just got to, you know, you're going to get ups and downs and you just got to, just get through it and, and try and think of what you're trying to achieve. Try and picture in your mind um, the result you want to achieve by whatever you're doing in life. Now, my achievement, what I want to achieve is just as simple as having a clean, tidy, newly decorated house that I can sit in and relax in. I can walk around without stepping over things. I can put my hand on something straight away. If I want a certain thing, I'll, I'll know what drawer to going I'll know what cupboard to open that's all I want at the moment and um, so I'm picturing that and that's what you focus on and anything worth worth doing you know it's going to take some effort so yes it's it's still a work in progress it's not going to happen overnight it's I'll have a lot to do but I'm getting on with it well not at the moment because I'm chatting to you but you know <sighs> I'm certainly calmer than I was uh, and, and a little bit happier than the uh, previous video.
I'm still a bit fearful, but I'm trying to to, to crush that fear of, of the future because we can't have it. We don't have anything to do with it. We we can direct our lives the way we'd like them to go, which will affect our future. But we've only got today. We've only got the now, haven't we? Do what you can do today, and just just go from day to day, hour to hour, and just get through that. Prayer is worth doing, even if you don't believe anyone's hearing you. Just speaking it out in your head, or even out loud, once a day. You do it. In, you do it in private. Nobody's going to see you. Nobody's going to mock you for doing it. It's between you know. It's just you, isn't it? So if you just want to, at the end of the day, just think about what your day's been, what's been good about your day, what's been bad, and be grateful for the good, and think about the bad, and and think what you've learned from it. But be grateful. Be grateful. I found that. Be grateful for what you've got. Show your gratitude. We don't say grace. Most people don't say grace before a meal. We never did growing up. We never did. My dad certainly believed in God. I was baptised as a child um, by my uh, godfather called Roger, who was also a vicar. And he used to send me religious books as I was growing up you know, little children's stories. Um, I remember one, <laughs> it's got other meanings now, but there was one picture book called Jesus Has Come. C-O-M-E. But of course my dirty mind reads other things into that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. Um, and there was, uh, there's another little book called Jesus and the Poor Widow, which I distinctly remember. And it was just a little like ladybird type book, a little parable. Um, and basically Jesus was observing um, rich men in the temple, you know, these big fat rich men, all with silks and gold jewellery, giving some of their money to the poor, into the poor box in the, in the temple or the chapel, whatever it was. And they were being very um, flamboyant about it. Look at how much money I'm giving. And, you know, it's probably a lot of money. I'm going to cry thinking about this story because it's such a um, very moral tale. And so they're there, they're, you know, flashing their cash about here. And then this poor widow comes, obviously, you know, dressed in ragged clothes and very sort of meek and sort of probably bent over, you know, and she put a penny into the collection box and sort of scuttled off and why am I getting so emotional about this it's a long time since I've thought about it and then um, so Jesus observed I think it was Jesus it might have been some one of his mates but I think it was Jesus he observed this going on and he commented that even though that with the poor widow had only given a penny compared to the money she had that was a huge amount compared to what these rich people had you know re relatively speaking that was a lot of money for her and she just meekly just gave this money and of course she was I can't, can't think of the words but you know where I'm going she um Jesus praised this poor widow because she gave what she could. She was poor herself, but she still gave what she could. And the rich people just gave a tiny fraction. It was hard. They didn't notice. They would notice losing that money. But the poor widow would have gone without just to give some of her money to people even poorer than her. And that was the moral of this little tale from this book that I remember reading as a child. So I've always been brought up in that sort of Christian um, religion. My mum doesn't follow any religion, I don't think. My, my dad certainly did believe. Um, 
but I don't think any of us really know, do we? But I feel it's right. Um, seeing some videos on YouTube, reading parables of things, you know, that I don't know. But anyway, so that's what I'm clinging to at the moment. I'm because I feel I did feel helpless. I'm sure a lot of us do feel helpless in even in normal times, there's times when we feel helpless, but especially now. And I do see that we are at the moment, I do feel that we are being controlled by evil people. Everything that I've seen and everything that I feel in my gut tells me that these people on our TVs and instantly, I, I just, uh, I don't watch nothing. I don't watch anything now that's news related. I don't even look online now. So I have to keep asking my, are we still in lockdown? Oh, yes. I hear odd snippets of stupid things that have been told, like now if you, uh, if you go abroad to a country that's got high case of the uh, C word and you come back and you, you lie about where you've been, you can get 10 years in prison. <laughs> Matt Hancock is telling everyone. You know, people rape and kill and get less than 10 years just because you've decided to go on holiday somewhere and you've not declared where you've been. Just think about that, folks. So I see things like that, but they tend to be on, you know, as I've said before, I watch um, UK Column. I watch a channel called Hugo Talks. I watch um, a very sweary Scotsman who doesn't live in Scotland anymore, Calamity. I watch some of his videos and similar videos to that. Um, so I do get some news, but I don't get, you know, BBC, ITV and all Sky and all that. I don't watch that. So I'm better for not doing that. I am better for not doing that, but it does does get, get you out of the loop because sometimes it's it's good to know what the opposition or what the masters are telling everyone oh my little daisy may um but anyway <laughs> so folks well best get on mark's actually gone to work today which is nice to get a bit of uh, time to myself. He's actually physically gone out to work instead of staying inside. You know, it's his house and he's entitled to it, but I, I'm okay with it most of the time. It does annoy me sometimes. I just like to have some time to get on with stuff without him in the house. So I, I feel, I feel less restricted, let's say. Oh, to be a, to be a little dachshund, no, she, as long as she's getting her belly filled and her belly rubbed, she's fine, it's little Daisy May. But anyway. Thought I'd just share that with you. If you're interested. So I've said before. Live each day, day by day. Achieve what you can and celebrate those achievements and learn from your mistakes and learn from any bad experiences you've had and try and move on from them because tomorrow is another day, as they say. Tomorrow is another day. Oh, Daisy, it's about time you got your uh, your little chew, isn't it, Daisy May? Because you had your breakfast. So it's about mid ne nearly midday, so it's time for your main main treat isn't it you'd like a treat would you would you like your treat hmm what <laughs> right that's it folks um sorry it's just another chatty video but uh as i said got my camera thought i'd have a have a chat i've had a bit of a bit of a trim up I was getting a bit too scruffy I haven't taken the beard off completely but the hairs were over my mouth you know I wasn't I didn't even trim trim the hair over my mouth 
so I thought I'll just get my beard trimmer and just get it down to to something a little bit more oh I'm dieting to finish bit positive news I mean I don't think it shows yet um, and again this is something to finish off I don't know how long I've been chatting but to finish off this is something else that was sort of do I was directed towards now I've been thinking of fasting and I've even got a book upstairs that I've read a little bit of and that was a while ago I had the book and started thinking about it again and the intermittent 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 fasting where you're not fasting all the time you're fasting for a certain number of hours and then I found this thing called OMAD which basically means one meal a day and I thought I could possibly do that because often I can get up and not really want if I've got something to do I, I, I won't have my breakfast if I get up and I think I want to film something I'll, I'll do the filming and then it could be sort of after 12 o'clock and I realize I've not eaten so I've realized that I could do the one meal a day thing um, but then I've sort of looked into it a bit more and, and the advice was don't start on that straight away. Don't start just by having one meal a day and, you know, basically you're, you're, you've got a one hour window to eat basically and then for 23 hours of the day you're not eating. You're drinking still, water, you can have, you know, herbal teas, black coffee, that sort of thing, but you're not eating anything. So. They say not to start that straight away. So I'm doing two meals a day. So I'm getting up. So around eight-ish, nine-ish, I'm having breakfast and I'm not having much. I just Today I just had a bowl of cereal and one slice of toast with peanut butter on and a black coffee. And I've stopped using spread as well as peanut butter because it tastes just the same. So instead of, you know, spreading sunflower spread on the toast and then peanut butter I just put the peanut butter on and there's no difference to me so that saves a few calories so I have that and I have a certain number of vitamins with my breakfast and my um, I have my um, turmeric and stuff like that so now that's me done until it will be about three or four where I'll have my main meal and it'll be a biggish meal you know a proper meal and a pudding and I'll have a glass of fruit juice and I'll also have the rest of my vitamins I'll have a multivitamin and the other supplements I take and then that's me done so I don't eat anything after four o'clock so it's more than 16 it can be more than 16 hours where I'm not eating so even though I went to bed slightly you know it was yesterday evening I thought well I'm a bit peckish I could do with an ice cream you know vegan magnum or something but I thought, no, I won't. And I went to bed, had some water, went to bed, woke up. I wasn't hungry when I woke up. And I could have carried on. I did have a, a small breakfast, but I could have carried on for a few hours without eating anything. And the good thing about doing this, um, you don't have to buy special diet foods because I've got loads of stuff to eat up. And I thought, I better still have a breakfast because I've got loads of breakfast cereals and I've got loads of... Um, plant-based milks that I only intend to use on cereal I don't use them in coffee so I'll get you know start eating that stuff and then I'll just concentrate on a big biggish meal just once a day but with with a light breakfast as well and then eventually we'll see how it, how my belly reduces but if you know if I need to have a boost I'll go on to one meal a day the good thing about this two meal a day is if and when we can go out, I could. you can still do the diet. You can still have a light breakfast. And then if you want to have a, a main meal, you know, if you want to go out to a restaurant or you're going to someone's house and having a meal, you can have that meal, but just don't eat anything after. Don't snack in between meals. So that's what I'm doing. And for me, well, I've only been doing it four days, but it's so simple. I'm not having special... I started watching some videos on YouTube and there's this muscly man... Um, talking about the various uh, fasting protocols. And then at the beginning of the video, he's, he's talking about the one meal a day. I'm not going to make it complicated. And then he starts going on about, oh, you really shouldn't take this multivitamin if you're this age, and oh, only take this multivitamin on an empty stomach, and blah, blah, blah. And then he started making it complicated. So I thought, switched him off, and uh, thought, no, I'll just do it. Just, you know, it's, it's going to have results on my belly because I'm restricting my calories, but I'm not hungry. And the more, because he used to fast, you know, it, fasting can be connected to, you know, many religions. And um, 
but it, it has been proven look it up yourself fasting for any amount of time can be very very beneficial to your body and um it can it can give you you know it can it can it can affect many aspects of your body and your mind in a positive way by just restricting how much you're eating we're used to grazing aren't we we used to feeling a little bit peckish and opening the fridge and just eat 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 and then you've got 500 calories just, just you know stood at the fridge um but you know previous before all this food was available 24 hours people would have three square meals a day or you know before that they might just have be able to have one meal a day or one meal every two days or every three days and you didn't see big fat people walloping about did you they're all lean and thin so it there is something in it restricting the amount of times you eat so if you're struggling with your weight i think it's worth trying to, to you know obviously there's plenty of help you can look on youtube but i think the the 8 16 i think it is which is basically what i'm doing you can eat for eight hours but not solidly <laughs> you know you've got you've got an eight hour window where you could have you know breakfast and and a main meal and then don't eat for 16 so that's what i'm doing and i must say four days in it it I'm not sure, I don't think I'm any thinner, I'm obviously, <laughs> it's going to take a while, but I think it's something I can easily sustain, I'm not counting calories, I'm not buying special food, I'm using up the food I've got, just eating what I normally eat, but eating it less, and not picking at things, not snacking, not having biscuits with a drink, you know, not having a packet of crisps, I haven't got any crisps left now, so we'll see, you'll, you'll I'll see if any difference happens in my belly because I'm aware I've been called fat. Um, but you know, when I stand up, folks, you know, look, I can hold it in. Mark, unfortunately, he can't hold. You know, if I have good posture, I I look slimmer till I do that. But I think yeah, it's, it's not too bad. But you know. Nobody would, nobody would think, point at me in the street and say, look at that fat so-and-so. But I've seen myself naked and uh, believe you me, it's not pretty. It's not a pretty sight and Daisy's seen me naked. She turned away. She put a paw over her eyes, didn't you, Daisy? I said, Daisy, I said, don't look, Daisy. Your daddy's got no clothes on. I wonder what dogs think, you know, because dogs don't put clothes on and off, do they? I wonder what Daisy thinks when she sees that big pink blob in front of her when I step out of the shower and she sat on my bed. Eh? <laughs> she loves me anyway, don't you? Yeah, she loves me because she gets what she wants from me, don't you? Anyway, I've, I've gone on for far, far too long. I don't suppose any of you have watched to the very end. So let's do that old code word thing. So you can mention this in the comments if you'd like to show that you've stuck. You've probably fallen asleep and you've just woken up now at this point. But anyway, what? What would the code word be? I know. Gratefulness. Gratefulness is the code word. If you've stuck to the end, just put gratefulness in the comments and I'll know that uh, you're a glutton for punishment. Right, Daisy May, let's go and get you a treat because you, you're so pretty, you deserve it, don't you? And I'll see you all soon, hopefully, with some more interesting things to talk about or show you with any luck. Keep your chin up and um, I don't know, I'm in no position to uh, give any of you advice. Mm. You're all individuals, just do the best you can and uh, don't let the buggers drag you down. Bye for now. <laughs>